Hey, welcome to this week's deep dive. Um, today we're gonna to talk specifically about probiotics and like what everyone is hearing from the industry at large that is completely wrong about probiotics and might kind of be leading in a lot in the wrong direction. So we're actually really lucky to have our Melise Facebook Live audience with us today. Um, these deep dives are normally something that we do that's kind of eyes only here at the company. Um, they, they've gained a real tradition. It's where we talk about the nitty gritty about what's going on with wellness. And, and uh, we've always kept it to ourselves because we tend to get a little um, controversial in, in this and we tend to kind of say things pretty raw and like they are. Uh, we're gonna keep that format. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spit the raw truth. Um, we're just gonna let all of you watch for this next little period of time and, and hopefully give you a little bit of a look behind the scenes at how we take a look at wellness, why we're doing things different, and why a bunch of the crap that you're hearing um, in the industry at large is actually doing you harm, and see what we can do to help rectify that and get you good information. So today we're gonna to talk specifically about probiotics and prebiotics, um, covering everything about why they're really important to help, uh, what functions of your health they're vitally important to, and dispel a bunch of the myths and rumors about how much you need, what types you need, and a bunch of the garbage that people are putting out there, um, essentially trying to sell products and, and misleading people in the process. Uh, so let's jump in and talk about why. Um, why do we even need probiotics in, in, in our health? Like what, um, what's the function and the purpose of, of these probiotics? Um, <clears throat> Now, probiotics are basically just a whole family of different type of bacteria that are friendly to our health. And recently, you know, the, uh, the importance and function of these probiotics has been researched to much greater detail than it ever has in history. And what we're finding out at every turn is that probiotics are more and more important to more and more parts of our health than ever previously imagined. Um, the other thing that's interesting is while the numbers vary a little bit, it's widely uh, agreed upon that within our bodies, there are actually more cells of these friendly bacteria than there are cells of us as a human being, which means that I am less Wallace than I am friendly bacteria. Um, so if we're taking a look at it strictly as an ecosystem thing, um, it could be said that our bodies, that we sort of exist to serve the colony of, of our bacteria. Um, and because of that, the impact that they have on our health, um, not only reactively, but actually proactively and direction-wise, is huge. Um, and, and much of the outcome of our health and well-being um, is being to a level dictated by these friendly bacteria. So they play uh, functions in, um, in nearly every real condition that's important to us in our body. Uh, they help with our digestion uh, by breaking down foods that we normally would not be able to break down to get the nutrition out of. They actually create some forms of vitamins that um, are difficult, if not impossible, to get in any other way. We can't eat these specific vitamin forms in food. Our body can't make these specific vitamin forms um, we basically require the proper breakdown of certain types of our food by these friendly bacteria to create these specific vitamin forms that uh, are really, really useful in our body. They play a huge role in immunity. And in fact, uh, the, the front line of our gut immunity, uh, which is the most interactive portion of our entire body, right? That's where we interact with the outside environment of food and beverage and anything else that we consume is within our gut. The front line of that immunity actually is provided by these friendly bacteria, by these probiotics. So if they go down, if the proper diversity and health of our bacteria goes down, it leaves a giant hole in our immunity. It leaves us open to everything from allergies to illness, infection. Um, so it's important to keep them healthy for that reason. Uh, the sort of newest research that's interesting is that our a healthy, friend, uh, friendly probiotic balance is a major determinant in weight management. Uh, and in fact, you guys might have heard there's sort of an interesting medical procedure they aren't doing in the U.S. yet, but they're doing some places internationally where they can do a fecal transplant, where they literally will take somebody, um, do a bit of an eradication of their probiotic uh, level, somebody who's, who's overweight, and then they take a transplant of fecal material of somebody who is at a healthy weight 
and put it into this person who's previously been overweight and their weight improves by the changed, essentially the borrowed friendly bacteria culture of, of a thinner person. So by properly managing our uh, probiotic levels and diversity, we actually can have a, a, a better chance at weight loss, at maintaining healthy weight, it's a big part of the picture. And then lastly, and I think most interesting, is the interaction between our friendly bacteria and our, and our brain health. Uh, and this is the newest piece of research of the bunch, which is that much of our brain chemistry is actually produced by friendly bacteria in our gut. Um, so a lot of the brain chemicals that help us feel happy, healthy, and at peace, you know, things that keep us from, from feeling down and getting you know, into, into negative places with our brain chemistry, aren't produced in our brain at all. They're produced by friendly bacteria in our gut. So, you know, if, if you want to have a strong immune system, if you want to properly digest your food, if you want to um, be able to do the best you can to maintain a healthy weight, if you want to stay happy, positive, feeling fantastic with your brain chemistry, um, making sure that we have our gut bacteria right is one of the primary most important things that you can do. So for one, that this means that it's a great opportunity, but for two, this is why it just like flat pisses me off so much that people are putting out such bad information on how to do this and why we as a group need to make sure that we're getting out good information because the potential to change people's lives with good information on gut bacteria is, is massive, right? Look at how many things, how many levers we can move. Um, all the things I talk about, plus hormonal health, right? We can move levers on so many important pieces in people's lives just by getting their gut bacteria right. So let's get out there, let's dispel the crap information and give them good information. Um, so what things do we do that actually hurt? And you can come show that if you want. Um, what things do we actually, th that we do in our lifestyles that actually hurt um, our probiotic levels and kind of what can we stop doing to help to build up and maintain a naturally healthy probiotic level. Um, first and foremost, and everybody knows this, overuse of antibiotics is, is the single most damaging thing that you can do to your friendly bacteria levels. Um, antibiotics have been amazing, you know, life-saving, world-changing drugs within the uses where they're really needed. Um, the problem being, like almost anything, especially Americans, for some reason, we, we, we find out something's good for something, we just want to overuse it to death everywhere. So um, the massive overuse of antibiotics, um, while they do kill the bad bacteria, they kill all your good bacteria too. So all these friendly bacteria we rely on for our very immunity and digestion and mental health are actually damaged, maybe killed when we overuse antibiotics. So, you know, we recommend, if the situation is super vital and antibiotics are really, really needed, obviously you use them and we worry about building your, your probiotic levels back up. But those cases of sniffles, little, you know, little inconveniences, those are not good times to use antibiotics. We need to do a better job of just boosting our natural immunity and letting our body take care of those things rather than throwing antibiotics at every little sniffle uh, because there's a big downside to that. There's a big issue with that. Um, you know, also one of the reasons that we like so much to be able to get in and, and give natural help with things like candida treatment, because then people aren't having to result to the chemical fix for that as often, which has all these negative side effects and are damaging some things in their long-term health um, in order to take care of, you know, what is a pretty easily rectifiable condition with some dietary changes. Um, so in addition to that, more than moderate alcohol intake, too much booze destroys your probiotics. Um, so when we say too much, like the, it's interesting with everything how research just always lines up, right? We know that like mild, moderate alcohol intake does some things that are actually, frankly, quite good for our health, right? There, there, there's some stress relieving stuff. If you're drinking wine, there's some really interesting nutritional things that happen. But all of these are like low, like a drink or two occasionally, right? That's where the benefits are, but that's where the benefits end. So if you're drinking to excess, either you know, infrequently. So like if, if you're the sort of person that goes out once or twice on a weekend and just gets blitzed, bad stuff happens. If you're somebody who drinks more than a drink or so, like daily, bad stuff happens. So um, alcohol moderation is, is important for a ton of different things, but it does play into uh, 
probiotic levels as well. So overuse of alcohol will kill or damage your probiotic levels. Poor sleep and stress um, come together, but overstress, not enough sleep, damaging to your probiotics. Um, lack of dietary diversity. Um, our probiotics actually have nutritional needs as well. And the way they get their nutrition is by digesting the foods that we eat. So we wanna make sure we're eating a widely diverse diet and don't get like pigeonholed on one or two items that we're eating so that um, not only we're getting the dietary diversity that we need, but our, our friendly bacteria that we're relying on get the dietary diversity as well. Um, smoking, there's like nothing smoking is good for, right? Like I don't, I don't quite understand why people are still doing this, but <laughs> it, you, you can almost put smoking's damaging to everything. It also happens to be damaging your probiotics. So if, if, if all of the other stuff, you know, the, the cancer scares and not being able to breathe walking up a flight of stairs hasn't scared you off from smoking, maybe quit for the benefit of, of your friendly bacteria. Um, and then low prebiotic intake. Uh, this is something that's coming up as big people are starting to talk about, hey, what about prebiotics? You know, do I need to be taking probiotics and prebiotics? And the way to think about this, probiotics are the actual bacteria themselves. Prebiotics are, um, you can look at them almost like the fertilizer for those probiotics, right? This, this is what helps to build up and maintain a really healthy um, and happy culture of, of these friendly bacteria, uh, bacteria in, in, in your gut. Um, and all prebiotics are is really almost any digestive resistant fiber um, acts as a prebiotic. We can't digest them but those bacterial, um, friendly bacteria can digest them and consume them and get healthy on them. Um, so for one, that's why it's important to have a big diversity in your diet, lots of fruits and vegetables. But for two, that's why like in our, in our protein shake, in the uh, Melissa MRP, not only are probiotics in there, but prebiotic fibers are in there as well. And all the prebiotic fibers you need in a day to keep your friendly bacteria really healthy are already in that shake. So when people ask you, they're like, well, I can't just take the probiotics that are in the shake, should I take prebiotics too? Already there. Like that thing is the most amazing, complete nutritional thing there is. Everybody should be using that every single day, at least once, probably twice, because everything you need is right there. It crosses off so many boxes. Um, this is the next sort of controversial question. This is where people are like, J just suck in marketing. Is there, they're trying to gain a marketing edge by pushing this, these numbers way, way, way up, right? You go into the grocery store, oh, there's this refrigerated section of, of, uh, of probiotics, and there's you know, 20 billion and 50 billion and 80 billion unit um, probiotics. And they're using that almost like an arms race, right? On, um, on trying to make it look like their product is the best because they've got the most probiotics in it. But the thing is, those probiotics that are delivered that need re uh, refrigeration in order to stay healthy, they're completely non-coded, they're completely unprotected, and nobody stops to think, well, if they're this fragile, what happens when I put them into my body? You know, if, if they're damaged by room temperature, what happens when they, they, they move up to 100 degrees before they implant, right? And nobody ever thinks about what happens when these completely unprotected and fragile probiotic bacteria have to go through my digestive process. And frankly, what happens is, is they're destroyed, right? So you, you spend a lot of money, you buy this giant flamethrower, 80 billion unit, uh, probiotic formulation, you consume it and it's destroyed by your stomach acid before any of those implant. So your net benefit from that is, if not nothing, next to nothing. And people have to stop this crap immediately. This is the whole reason why we actually go in and we enterically coat, nano encapsulate all of those probiotics, right? We're trying to get in and not only create something by, by nano encapsulating live cultures so that they are shelf stable, and they can live at you know 80 degrees on your shelf. Um, that's that's part of the reason that we do the encapsulation. But the big reason is they're protected and buffered from all of your stomach acid, so they aren't killed by your body before they get to where they need to be. Um, they open up after the, the juncture of the common bile duct when when uh, when that digestive uh, goes back to basic, and which means they implant right exactly in the gut where we need them. So. Uh, you know, anything non-protected is damaged, but 
these are not only protected from, from that damage of digestion, but they're actually delivered by hand straight to where they need to go. And I don't understand why nobody else is doing this. Um, it just, it, it's the only way it makes sense to supplement probiotics. And people are selling a ton of crap that doesn't do this. The other thing they're doing, which is super misleading and a bunch of crap is to try to gain marketing advantage, you know, they're doing 80 billion units of 35 different strains of probiotics. Just people who, who don't know, just assume more is better, right? So I see this huge number and all these different kinds, it has to be better. Um, here's the flat truth on that. While diversity of, um, of your friendly bacteria across a number of strains is important, um, it's, all, it's really, really difficult to try to ever get to that point by supplementing a whole bunch of different types. And the vast majority of your friendly bacteria uh, culture is made up of three like basic foundational strains. And these three basic foundational strains actually create the positive environment to allow diversity to happen. Um, so because of that, we focus on, on the three strains that are most important. And they're Lactobacillus acidophilus, Bifidobacterium bifidum, and Bifidobacterium longum. And so if you actually supplement with those three strains, which is what we're doing, uh, for one, that's the vast majority in bulk of, of what your strains are. And the other thing is by supplementing with those, they, they actually create the digestive environment that allows proliferation and diversity. Um, so within the walls of your intestine, you know, there, there, there are only so many little places that that uh, friendly bacteria can take up residence. You know, it's, it's limited real estate on the walls of your intestinal space. Um, and so uh, basically what we do is by getting in and, and populating those spaces with these most important uh, of, of the friendly bacteria, as they digest the food necessary to feed these other strains and cultures, they create this highly fertilized and fertile environment for all the other cultures. And then your dietary diversity allows diversification of your bacterial culture. So essentially, if we, if we supplement with these three, diversification happens at a higher rate than if you're supplementing with small amounts of, of, of dozens of different strains. So this is you know, scientifically the only place to focus on to make this happen right, all the other stuff is marketing fluff. The 80 billion units is marketing fluff. The 100 different types is marketing fluff. And that's where people are getting misled. They're spending a lot of money, they're investing time, they're investing their health in solutions that are never going to get them to where they need to be. So we need to make sure that we're educating on how that stuff is, is crap, it's marketing smoke and mirrors, and we need people to focus on the stuff that actually matters to move the needle. Um, so lastly, what, what should I take? Um, you guys know when we build products out, it's because we think we're building legitimately the, the best possible product on the planet based on the research that's available. So if somebody asks what should, what should they take, like the answer is so easy on that, we've built what they need to take. So if they're not taking our stuff, they need to take something that is, is doing the same thing as our stuff. Um, they need to take something like the meal replacement shake that has got eight billion units of, of actually nano-encapsulated and enterically coated probiotics so they survive digestion and get to where they need to be, plus a bunch of the prebiotic fiber to make sure that they're safe and healthy. Um, or they need to be taking something like uh, our actual probiotic formulation, which has a little more, it's got 10 billion units of probiotics, same nano-encapsulation, same enteric protection, from digestion, but this one actually has been herbally optimized. So you look in there and, and see a, a number of different herbs that are included. Those herbs that are included are there specifically because those herbs help to create the environment in your digestive system, in your gut, that, cre that, that creates a healthy space for these probiotics to implant. So everything we give not only has the probiotics, they're delivered in such a way that they'll be viable and be able to implant, and we're also delivering the environment that will allow them to be successful and actually make a difference in, uh, in changing your health. So that's probiotics. Awesome. All right, thank you.